In this quick Unity tutorial, we're going to set up a working split screen multiplayer system using Unity 6 and the new input system. By the end of this video, you'll have multiple players joining with different control schemes, controllers or keyboard, and each getting their own camera view. All right, let's dive in. If you guys like tutorials like this, hit subscribe. I post Unity tutorials like this every week. Thanks. All right, let's open Unity Hub. We're going to start with a new project. We're going to select Universal 3D Core. We'll name our project Split Screen. We'll give it a location. Make sure you have Unity version 6 selected or higher. Uncheck Connect to Unity Cloud and hit Create Project. All right, let's start by creating our own Input Actions asset. We're going to right click on the Assets folder, go to Create and select input actions. I'm going to call this player controls and we'll double click on that to open it. Under action maps, we'll hit a plus and we will name this game play. Okay, on the right side, we'll name the default action move. We'll change action type to value and we'll change control type to vector two. Under move, we'll select the first binding. We'll click on path. We'll go to gamepad and we'll select left stick. We'll click the plus right next to move and we'll add an up, down, left, right composite. We'll rename this to WASD. We'll assign all the bindings under WASD to the correct keys on the keyboard. Now, in order for Unity to understand which input devices control which players, we're going to need to set up control schemes. So we'll click on the No Control Schemes drop down and hit add control scheme. First we'll add keyboard. Under list empty, we'll hit the plus and look for keyboard and then select keyboard, hit save. We'll go back to the drop down. We'll hit add control scheme and we'll call this one gamepad. We'll hit the plus and we'll look for gamepad and then select gamepad and hit save. Now we have to assign our bindings to the correct control schemes. Select left stick and in the right side, click gamepad. Select up, click keyboard, down, click keyboard left keyboard and right keyboard. Now save your asset and close this window. All right, let's make a player prefab. So in the hierarchy, we're gonna right click, create a 3D capsule, call this player. We're gonna reset its transform in case it's not at zero, 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 and then we'll move it up one on the Y. We're going to add a player input component. We'll type in player input and select the player input component. We'll drag our player controls input actions asset into the action slot. We'll leave default scheme on any. We'll deselect auto switch and the default map will be game play. Make sure behavior is set to send messages. Now we're gonna create a material for our player. We'll right click on assets, go to create material. We'll call this player. We'll drag this onto our capsule in the scene window. Now let's right click on assets and go to create folder. We'll call this scripts. Under scripts, we're gonna create a new mono behavior script, which we'll call player movement. Double click to open player movement. Player movement open, we're going to add some properties. The first property will be a serialize field, private float, move speed, and we'll set it equal to five by default. Then we'll create a private vector two, move, input. This will store our input from any input devices we have. We'll go to the start method and we'll say get component render dot material dot color equals new color random dot range zero f one f comma. I'm going to select the random range and I'm going to copy it twice. I'll remove the last comma and close that line. This will set our player color to a random color when we first start. Next, we'll create an on move method to handle input coming from our input controllers. Public void on move, hit escape, input value, input. We're gonna set our move input equal to input.get vector two. We'll come down to update and we will say vector three move equals new vector three move input dot x comma zero comma move input dot y. Now we'll say transform dot translate move times move speed times time dot delta time in space dot world. Save this file and go back to Unity. Select your player and drag the player movement component onto it. Now we'll right click on assets 
Go to Create Folder and name this Prefabs. Drag your player from the hierarchy into the Prefabs folder. Now let's create a 3D ground plane. We'll right click in the hierarchy, go to 3D Objects, select Plane. Call this Ground. We'll set the scale to 5 by 5. We'll create a new material by right clicking on Assets, selecting Create and Material. We'll call this Ground. We'll drag the ground material onto the ground plane. With the ground material selected, select the Base Map slot and select default checker. We'll set the tiling to 10 by 10 on the X and Y. Now we'll add a player input manager. Right click in the hierarchy, create empty, call it player manager. Add a component, player input manager. Set notification behavior to invoke C sharp events. Make sure join behavior is set to join players when button is pressed. Let's drag our player prefab into the player prefab slot. Now we need a camera system. Let's right click on scripts, go to create mono behavior script. Call this split screen camera. Let's double click this to open it. First, we're going to add a require component attribute. Require component type of camera. This ensures that our game object has a camera component attached to it. Next, we'll create some properties. Private camera cam. Private, int index, private, int total players. Next, we'll create an awake method. Start typing awake, hit tab when you see awake recommended. We're going to tell the player input manager that we want to be notified when players join. Player input manager dot instance dot on player joined plus equals handle player joined. We'll have Visual Studio create this method for us by right clicking, going to quick actions and selecting generate method handle player join. In handle player joined, we'll set total players equal to player input dot all dot count. We'll call setup camera. Once again, we'll have Visual Studio create setup camera for us by right clicking, going to quick action and generate method setup camera. Before writing the setup camera code, we'll go to start. In start, we're going to write index equals get component in parent player input dot player index total players equals player input dot all dot count cam equals get component camera cam depth equals index setup camera. Next, we'll write the setup camera code. This will make our cameras the right size and put them in the right location. If total players equals one, then this player should have the full screen. Camera rect equals new rect zero zero one one. The rect is set so that it defines the x position, the y position, and then the width and the height. Else if total players equals two cam dot rect equals new rect index equals zero question mark this is a conditional operator so if index equals zero we'll return zero otherwise we'll return 0 0.5 comma zero comma 0 0.5 f comma one else if total players equals three cam dot rect equals new rect index equals if index equals zero then zero. Otherwise, we'll check if index equals one does, then 0 0.5. Otherwise, it's zero. And if index is less than two, then we'll set our y position to 0.5. Otherwise, we'll set it to zero. And then again, if index is less than two, we'll set it to, we'll set our width to 0.5. Otherwise, it'll be one. That way, the third player will get the full width of the screen. And then every player gets half height. Finally, we'll deal with four players. Else, cam dot rect equals new rect index modulus two times 0 0.5 f index is less than two then set it to 0 0.5 or zero if it's not and then 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 for the width and height save your script and go back to unity open your player prefab right click on player go to create camera call this player cam. We'll drag our split screen camera script onto this camera. Make sure to disable the audio listener on this camera. Now let's move our camera back 10 in the Z axis. Before testing our setup, let's remove the player prefab that's in the scene by deleting it. Now let's hit play to test. Now we'll hit spacebar, WASD to move. Now I'll hit any key on my gamepad and I'll use the left stick to move. 
Then I'll hit any key on my other gamepad, left stick to move. And that's it. You now have a working split screen multiplayer setup in Unity 6. If you found this helpful, hit like and subscribe and check out my full Unity 101 course. The link is in the description below. See you in the next video.